Hi everyone. I've made a few towels for Second Life. The earliest ones were not so successful, but I've learnt some things along the way and I'd like to share some of those tips. But so I've already made the tail ready. So the first thing to do is add an Avastar and line it up with the Avastar. So add Avastar complete. Now it's more or less where I want it, but the bones aren't. So I'm going to click the bones and then look at rig display and disable these groups but enable tail first. Uh, we're no longer distracted by the other bone groups. Now you can see this uh, default tail doesn't fit the tail I made and I want it to. It's also too high because if I were to push the tail up to the Oops. Then it's coming out of the waist. Well, I've never seen an animal where the tail comes out of the waist. Right, so we're going to select the bones. In joint edit workflow. Ah, oh, I don't know what that is. Let's click it and find out. It blinked left. Oh, I didn't mean to leave the structure bones enabled. So let's go to special bone groups here and un uh, deselect structure. Okay. All right, so now I want to uh, move these bones. So press L and that selects all linked and pull it down, GZ, to about halfway up the tail. Now I want to lengthen the tail, so I'm going to change the cursor to 3D cursor, select this end, and then Shift S, Cursor to selected. Select all the bones again and then S. So let's scale it right to the end. Actually, this bone is too long, it's longer than I wanted, so I'm just going to select these bones. And then select them all again and S until it reaches the tip. There we go. So I'm going into object mode now. Select the tail. Yeah, it's about halfway into the body, which is what I wanted. Okay. So now we'll control A, all transforms. So it now has location, rotation and scale applied. And the tail itself into pose mode. And then posing panel. Scroll down there and find the with joints button and click that. That stores the joints. Right, so now we're going to bind the tail to the bones. So select the tail in object mode. Shift select the bones and binding and skinning. Choose preserve weights and bind to armature. Now that adds an armature modifier, which you'll see here. 
but you won't find any vertex groups yet. So that comes with the next stage. We do it that way to prevent the tail from picking up weights from the bones in the body. Right, so we go to weight copy now. Automatic from bones. Choose enable deform bones. Click on tail. Deselect everything else. So we've only got the tail uh, button active. And then update weights. And that adds all the tail bones. But as you can see, let's go to pose mode. Select the bones first. When you now move the tail, now this is an IK, so you, could, you only need to move the last bone. G. So the problems here are angularity and the uh, body end is popping out of the body. But that's okay, we're going to fix that. Uh, let's uh, Alt R. So select them all first and then Alt R. That straightens it out again. We're going to X ray mode. going to add some pelvis weights, so vertex select, maybe this much, so select that, go to vertex groups and click the plus sign, rename it by double clicking, M pelvis, and then click the assign button below. And we're not quite done because as you can see it still moves a bit but that's okay we'll fix that so with that still selected we're going to click on tail one and remove tail one weights and tail two okay control i so that we're selecting the tail and not the pelvis and then mesh weights smooth and move this iteration slider until it all smooths out. Don't worry if a bone pops through the mesh, it doesn't matter. I'll just smooth this in between a bit. Smooth. Seven. All right, it looks okay. And so the next thing is fill in edit mode, select all, mesh weights, limit total, deform pose bones, and then mesh weights, normalize all. You'll find that lock active is ticked. So you, you must untick it. Okay, so now we come to the posing. Select all the bones and then Alt R. We'll just check it. Now if you want the, the towel to curve downwards, then begin by rotating that slightly there. Now, now when you move this, it will curve down. But if you want it to go upwards, it 
might not want to go upwards until you move you rotate that bone upwards so let's have a look oh it did right if it doesn't then just rotate that a little bit to give it a start like that and that looks all right Now this tail has not been UV unwrapped yet, which means it's not going to take a texture until it has been. So let's quickly do that now. So we'll mark some seams. Vertex select. I'm going to select the underneath long loop. And perhaps this loop here and then control E mark seam I think I've forgotten to delete a face here so let's have a look so X delete that face now I'm going to select all of the well and then you unwrap so now let's look in the uv editing workspace and we can see that the tail is the orientation and the uv space is wrong and it's not in the center so let's fix that so roughly gx and then we're going to um, make sure that sync is off and click face select here click away so that nothing is selected then L to select all the linked tail vertices and then R now I'm going to select this center line I'm going to try and estimate what's uh, oh back into vertex select. Try and estimate the center one, and then right click it and align auto, and then P to pin those those vertices, and then select that whole tail again, and then U unwrap. And it's corrected itself. So we want that pinned line to line up with this one here. So while it's selected, GX. Right, now it's overlapping the edge of the UV square. We don't want that. So S to scale. That's corrected it and then just select this tail tip here and click away so that this is deselected. Just put that in the correct place about here. All right, so I think that's ready to export now. And it will now take a nice texture. So select the tail. Well, export Collard Avastar DAE. I called it Demo Tail. And then into Second Life. Upload Mesh Model Tail. Gonna zero the lowest LOD. Add the lowest physics. That reduces the financial cost. And then rigging. Include joint positions. And we've got to do that because we lengthened the tail and moved one of the tail joints. 
calculate weights and fee upload attach to tell base it's animated a bit from the, the last time I played a tell animation I'll just reset my skeleton So now we'll make an animation for it. It's back to layout. Now the guy has made a very nice animation workspace and you'll find that uh, in at the bottom of workflows, SL animation workspace. It's already loaded but you can you would click that and then SL animation appears up the top as a new workspace. So we'll click that. So up here you've got the action editor where you put your keyframes. Down here is the graph editor where we'll make it site click. All right, so as I said before, you only need to select the tail tip in pose mode to move it around. Okay, so we're going to move it to one side first. And maybe up a bit. Down a bit. Something like that. Select all. You only need to do this on the first frame. and I rotation and then we're going to advance by 20 each time if I remember I keep forgetting and then it overwrites the frame before all right so G swing it over to the other side Yeah, that's quite nice. Now, up here, the guy has made a smart keying tool. And this will keyframe all of the bones that have moved without needing to have them selected. So I'm just going to keep the tail tip selected because that's the one I'm controlling with. And press smart keying and that's put the correct keyframes in. Uh, advance to 40. It's easier to to move the cursor down here where the numbers are bigger. I'm just going to undo the rotation with all selected. Alt R. And I'm going to swing it down this time. That's a bit wide isn't it I'm being a bit too elaborate here I think just make it a hundred frames long right so now we copy the first frame to the last and to do that you just left click the top diamond that deselects the other rows or columns and then shift D and drag to frame 100 okay right so when we now set the timeline to We've got 100 frames, so I'm going to set it to 99 because I don't want it to play the duplicated frame twice. So just once. So set this to 99. And then you'll get less jitter. And we'll see how that plays. And if, if there's a falter, we'll make it cyclic. Yeah, 
yeah there, there is a bit of a falter there okay so select all the bones select all the bones in all the keyframes in the graph editor and then shift e make site click we'll see how that plays now it's better i think All right, now we've got to name this. We don't want it called avatar action, so we call it lash tail. Uh, I'm gonna save the file. And that means next time we look at the file, it will be here in the drop down list. I meant, meant to take the shield here. That stores it in the list for forever. Okay. Now it's time to export the animation. So we've got the render tab here in the vertical menu on the right. Scroll down to animation export. This is where the Avastar exporter lives. Mode Anim, I don't want BVH, it's not as accurate. So Anim actually bakes the action so that Second Life can't drop any frames or, or mess with it, like it does with BVH. You don't need a T-pose with Anim. All right, so start frame. I've got synchronized turned on, so it synchronized the start and end with the timeline. Mm. Priority zero. There's no default animation for tails in uh, made by Second Life, so uh, it only needs to be zero. And then loop animation in zero out ninety nine. Untick apply armature scale because this is a default human. It's not an animal or giant or tiny. Export lash tail. Upload animation. Lash tail. Right, now we'll texture it. If I can catch it. I've got one ready. Think three. Now you can wear an attachment on the tail tip. And there we go. And that's the result. You, you might do better. I think I've got too much twist in this tail. All right. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.